my first base pay was eight dollars and twenty cents for one month. That's when you were getting twenty one dollars a month. So I I was was smart enough to figure it out that if I if I went to jump school, if, if I could survive, I could make another fifty dollars a month. So that's where I went. When you first went there, of course, there was a lot of a lot of physics physical stuff, you know, running and jumping and, you know, spacing and calisthenics and all of that. And then uh, then they had the high towers, which were 50 feet high. You, you came off, went up on an elevator pulley, and then they cut you loose and you came down on your own. Was it fun? Well, it, a little bit, but there was also the other, the other portion of it too, you know, you had to, you had to think about, it. hey, wait a minute now, <laughs> you know, you're going to go up there in this plane, you're, and not, you're not going to come down in it. And to be honest with you, I'll, I'll truthfully say that the first time I landed in an airplane, I was scared to death, more so than jumping. So then we went and we would land in uh, Southampton, England, and then. Took buses down to Chilton Foley, where the base, where our base camp was, and then started our training from there. Well, we were getting ready to go to go into combat into into Normandy. I was there about um, I guess we were I guess I was there about two months, maybe a little longer, maybe three months, and uh, they sent. Uh, six of us to British Parachute School. And uh, we were there, we went there for a couple of weeks, but only we only made one jump out of, out of their planes. That was, that was fun, I enjoyed it. That one, I didn't mind jumping at all. Nah, that was, that was nothing to it. On the night of the 5th, when Eisenhower came around to visit us, and he, uh, wished us well and all that. And at about two o'clock we took off across the bay, uh, channel. And when they, and the, 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 the jump was, wasn't a success for the simple reason that they, uh, the, w they hadn't done their right kind of reconnaissance and, they, and there was aircraft, German aircraft was down on the, on the coast, see? And when the, when the planes come in, well, naturally they open fire. And when they did, a lot of times they, the planes either got hit or they had to maneuver to get away from the you know the fire. And then about that time, that when the green light came on, and that's when everybody unloaded. You could see the sky was loaded with tracers. And some of the planes, matter of fact, one of or our our company planes was shot down and they, they lost a whole plane load. But anyhow, and so we went down and, and a lot of them landed in the, in the water because of the marshes, like just like marshes here, you know, same deal. We had objectives, you know, that where we were supposed to go and the town we were supposed to go, St. Mary Galice and all of that, but we never got there. All the jumpers were, we had a little signal with us, a cricket, it's a metal, and it, it makes a little cricket sound, and everybody had one of those. And that was, there were crickets <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> but anyhow, we, and then you, you got as many guys together as you possibly could. Of course, most of us were low rankers and didn't, wasn't in charge or anything. We were just fodder flying around, you know. So anyhow, so that was, uh, so then they, they finally we, we finally got a group together. I think there was about about twelve or fifteen in, in the group I was in, and they were from everywhere. I mean, from different outfits and all that. It took us about the first day, and maybe part of the second day before we all got you know back together, because they were scattered everywhere. I mean, it was it, it wasn't a success as much as they like to think, but it but it but it worked out. Uh, well, there was a, 
they were, of course, the Germans were. They were, they were firing at us and blowing, and throwing in shells and everything. And it was just, it was just, just combat. What was I doing? <laughs> Trying to keep from getting hit. <laughs> uh, well, it was. Uh, we were to take this little town, and uh, we we finally we never did get there because we never. It took us two days to get everyone to get over our unit back together, and then we started to push from there into Carrington. And Carrington, that was the that was the first bayonet assault in uh, in World War Two by the American forces. It took us about a day and a half to get there, and then on the, on the 11th of June, I got hit in uh, my arm, and. Uh, I got, uh, they evacuated me back to England. Uh, I went by a small craft out to a, a livery ship, and and it was beginning to fill up with casualties. And uh, then we 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 spent the night on the on the water and went back to England. Uh, of course, I had left the unit, and they were still fighting in uh, Normandy. They got into Cherbourg, and then they moved them back. My, the unit I was in, or was attached to, they went back to England, and we started training for Holland. And then uh, in September, we went to, uh, we loaded up, and went, got on the planes, and jumped into Holland. To get to the uh, Rhine River. Well, all the, well, we got reorganized, and, and we, my my particular unit, went to. Uh, we started into uh, Amsterdam. To there was a, we had a pocket in there that that had been cut off, like uh, troops. Had, some of the some of the troops had got cut off in there. That was our mission mainly. To secure the bridges and oh, a lot of bridges in Holland. At that time, the the overall big picture was they were getting ready to go across the Rhine River and go into Germany. We stayed there and went out and did patrol duty and all that until uh, well, that was well, about about two two and a half months, I guess. Then we left and went went back to uh, France, and uh, then when we got there, the uh, we got a little break in for a few weeks or a few days, I should say, and went got a trip to Paris. We, we all went in trucks, you know, cargo trucks, and all that, you know. But they, they, they was, so when I was in the last group that went. And uh, when we got back, well, that's when uh, the, uh, the Bastogne was uh, was being run over by the Germans. And uh, so we got back, got our gear in shape, and shipped out by truck. Went by truck up to uh, toward Bastogne, and then we went into Bastogne in December. Just prior to Christmas, and uh, that was quite an experience. We were isolated. We were, we got cut off in there. See, when, it, when we went in, it was like you went in the path, and and then they were of course they were here, and when we went through, then they were here. Well, that that, that was that was that was a firefight for about. So we, we almost ran out of ammunition. The Eleventh Armored Regiment, they come in and uh, right after Christmas, and we and we had we were out of food. There was no aircraft flying. We couldn't get supplies. We didn't have any. Uh, we were down to hardly any ammunition. I mean, that wasn't just. <laughs> and we were just. We were just there. That was it. And we, got, we went down into um, Aust Austria, 
and uh, just outside of the eagle nest. We were more concerned with anything more than anything else of, of prisoners. They'd surrendered by thousands. They, and they, of course, they were, what happened is there was the country was out of food, and, and, and they were looking for food. So they were just just marching. And, they, and, and, and of course, they wanted us to supply them, and we, we couldn't, but we didn't, we didn't, we, we didn't have a whole lot of supplies either. And it was, it was, I mean, it was tough. And of course, and, and they just turned them loose, and no, half of them wasn't under guard or anything. They were just going back to Germany. And that's the way it went until, uh, until the war was over. So a after that, then uh, we, we went into just outside of Salzburg. Our, our regiment did, and uh, that's when we came out with the, uh, the government came out with the program that if you had a certain amount of time and all that, you you were they were you would be evacuated, and and I, that was about the, that was about the end of my combat duty at that time. I came back. I was, I was out just a little over a year. I was getting ready to go to college, and I. I was working as an electric helper and all that, and so I said, well, I think I'll go back in the Army. So I did. Right now, the, the boys overseas, are, their problem is the people that put them there have never ducked a bullet. They don't know what it's all about. And I'll I'll say that to the day I die. Until you've been there, you don't know. <laughs>